Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. I went online to become a private detective. It was a private detective school online, and I paid online. I never heard from them again. I thought to myself, I either got ripped off, or this is my first case. This is a journalistic podcast, Shannon. We vaccinate our listeners with answers. And I'm going to keep lip syncing the important questions until TikTok gives me a show. Shannon, how can the moon landing be real if the moon itself is fake? It's not true, Mike. Oh, isn't it true, Shannon? You're fake. You're a hologram. One in five New Yorkers are food insecure. What's your solution for that, Mike? Fortune cookie. Because that's food and advice at the same time. Shannon, at least have the decency to backstab me, okay? You stab me in the front every time. Some fans can't watch the podcast because they're triggered by our sexuality. And message to those fans, we will leak a sex tape right into your mouth. This is Mike Vecchione Investigates. And you're not better than me. Welcome to another episode of Mike Vecchione Investigates. We have a lot on tap today. Thank you for joining us. We are your headquarters for journalism. I tried comedy for many years, but now it seems that journalism is what's taking over. So thank you for joining us, guys. Um, I'm going to get right to our guest. She is in studio. She is very funny. I know her from the Stand Comedy Club, and uh, but I don't know that much about her. So this investigation, that's why you guys tune in. The investigation is not pre-planned. We are going to take it as it comes. My guest, stand-up comedian Chloe LaBranche. Give it up for her. Thank you for coming in, Chloe. Thanks for having me. Um, you look great. Oh, so do you. And you got a purple shirt on. 32 was my number in um, high school. Yeah, it's a uh, football. I don't know if this is racist, but it says Republic of Dominica. Republic of Dominica. That doesn't sound, that sounds just like a country. Dominican Republic. Yeah. And a lot of, uh, you flipped it on its head and went Republica de Dominica. That's what it says. Yeah. So it's a great shirt. Um, how are you? I'm First feel, of all, I'm feeling really good. You're feeling good. Yeah. Okay. Any, any read? Did you do a, a juice cleanse like I do every morning? Is that the reason for your feeling? Um. Or do you do something else? Did I, you do a power workout? I did. Pilates. Work, I did work out. I'm uh, doing do? this uh, YouTube video of how to. Do you know Emily Ratajkowski? Uh, I've heard that name. She's that really hot model. Yes, she's so hot. So she has a line down her stomach, mm-hmm. which I'm working on, and I actually cesarean. <laughs> No. It goes this way. Oh, okay. It's but, different. You get that from working out? Yeah, you have to do uh, her specific workouts. Wow. So. And what's it entail? Squat thrusts? I'm big on squat thrusts. It's like you lay on your back and you're like... Ugh. Yeah. For like 40 minutes. Could you describe it verbally for our fans who can't afford a computer? We cater to low-income <laughs> whites here. Um, basically, you lay on your back. Yeah. And your neck really hurts. Right. And you're just constantly trying to move your abs. But I don't have any abs because my body is like a veal. It's a veal. Yeah, it's just um, no muscle and kind of small. Right. Yeah. So that's not bad. Yeah. That's in now. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Shannon, can we check that? That there she is. Okay, that's in. Uh, Emily Rakowski. Who did she date? Pete. Not that men define women because they don't here in March. Pete Davidson. Women's Awareness. Pete Davidson, our friend, friend of the show. She got cheated on, though, by... She's, like, one of the hottest girls, and she got cheated on by her husband. Wow. So it's like, if she's getting cheated on, we're all fucked. Yeah, she's getting cheated on. And it's just like, are men never satisfied? No. Are we not satisfied with anything? You tell me. No, I mean, I'll put myself and other men on trial. Yeah. And we we are on trial. When is it enough? But do women cheat also, Chloe? It raises a good point. Do uh, women cheat also? I think that women, after they've been cheated on, right. they do it like a revenge. revenge. I think revenge is the word you're looking for. Exactly. I always step on my guests and I don't mean to. No, you're just smarter than us. No, I don't think that's what it is. I think it's clearly not what it is. It's I'm overcompensating mm. for the other way, the lack of... Penis? In- in- intellect. Oh. But that could also work. Got it. Um... So you're doing this workout because I don't understand you're doing a workout 
given by a woman who's been cheated on is your goal to be cheated on? Is that your fitness goal? Well, at least she got a husband. I never had a husband, right. so maybe I could get one of her goals. But you're still in the game. I'm in the game. What does husband material look like for you? Um, I'm going to write it down. A job. A job. Would be good. Because this is how you manifest things. I don't know if you've read Ladies Home Journal this month. No. This is how you manifest. You write it down. So I'm mm-hmm. going to do it for you, Chloe. Job. I've got it. Job. Um do you care to specify high, a blue collar or a white collar? White collar. White collar. I want them to I'm just it pay for everything and then I'll quit comedy. Okay. Job. And what's next, Chloe? Um, I would like them to be into skiing. Skiing. I love to ski. How about a ski instructor? That, that knocks both of our uh, things off the list. It's a job and it's also the other thing. But they don't make any money and they're right. usually drug addicts. Good good call, yeah. Chloe. So... Um, so skiing, but no drugs. I'll put that as a side note. It would be so I don't drink and I have a lot of trouble with it. So right. it would be nice to um, find a guy who can just like smoke crack like a gentleman. Right. Smoking. Do you do uh, any <laughs> any drugs? Um, the smoking crack thing tipped us off, but I wanted to be sure it's a thorough investigation. Well, I dated a guy I met in rehab who was a crackhead, mm-hmm. and. Um, He relapsed, and while I was away, he was at my apartment, and he wallpapered the whole thing. He wallpapered your apartment? Yeah, because I think he was, like, on crack, so he was just really thorough. Is that what crack does to you? Forces you to decorate? (laughs) Some. Maybe he was gay. He was gay. He was gay and on crack, and that equals... um, (laughs) Not marriage. Remodeling. Yeah. Okay, so let's stick to it. Skiing, no drugs. And no, sobri- no, 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 no. They can, they, can, they can do it. They can take mushrooms and acid. Okay. You have specified which drugs they could take. Yeah. Is that controlling? Uh, Just yes or no. Be honest with the fans. 100%. It's pretty controlling. Yeah. Why am I going to do drugs? You're going to tell me which ones I could do? Yeah. Mushrooms and acid? I don't want a guy on cocaine. But what about that um, Olymp- Olympiad? Shannon, what's it called? Ozempic. Ozempic. I was just going to talk to you about okay, that. Okay, well, that is a drug... That gets you hot. So are you against a guy trying to get hot? Well, they have to be fat first to do right. that. But, uh, there's but is, all it's these... never too skinny. Skinny is in now. Yeah, you can never be too rich or too thin. Right. Um, but I have a lot of friends who are fat, and then they went on Ozempic. Right. So I like them better. No, I'm kidding. But um, there's now like new studies coming out that when you take Ozempic, you get skinny, but your face ages a lot. Right. And, uh, but there's an app for that, isn't there? To make your face, oh, you mean Younger. face too? If my face gets old, no problem. I have an app and a filter that that takes care of that. You can solve anything through technology, according to Natalie's generation. <laughs> Natalie, do you want to chime in here and defend your generation? Ozempic, um, Chloe said, makes your face old. And then I retorted, for the people who read, um, I exclaimed, um, she could just use an app to make your face younger. You right, can. Natalie? You can, but then in real life, people are going to catch on to that pretty quickly. Okay. Catfish. Well, you don't bring real life into it. If there's one thing you don't do with Gen Z is bring real life into it because we don't believe in eye contact and I will slip into your DMs, but I will not talk to you in and person. everybody's a homosexual. And everybody's, I don't know if Bisexual. they're a homosexual. Homosexual is a label and this, this generation is not into labels. Yeah. It's fluid. Oh, yeah, I agree. They don't and, use condoms. No, because they don't have sex. They have virtual something. Well, it's because like virtual reality. The STDs have kind of gone away, except for chlamydia. Right. And I think that they're going to still not use condoms, and then new STDs, AIDS will come back, and they'll all get fucked. Uh, do you think it's going to come back? Did it ever go away? It went away, kind of, mm-hmm. and now it's back. It's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. I got a feeling. But what about chlamydia? You mentioned chlamydia. All these girls have been getting it. Right. Like these twenty-five-year-olds, I know. Why? I don't know. It's just. It's... Is it a virtual reality <laughs> disease now? I don't think you can get chlamydia online. Mm. But there are viruses online. Out there. Oh online. yeah, like a computer. Like in, yes. when you don't enable cookies. Yeah, it's a double meaning. I didn't know what cookies were. I don't know. Either. I don't know what it is, Shannon. What are cookies? But I feel like when you enable cookies, you got to take Ozempic. <laughs> Yeah, because it's like the double meaning of cookies. Mm -hmm. It's like, what am I getting here? Advertisements? Cookies has something to do with advertisement. Targeted ads. Yeah. it's um... And then cookies is also um, a delicious dessert (laughs) that we used to have when I'm older. Chloe, I don't know how old you are. I'm not going to. It's March. 
Oh, do I'm they... not going to let you disclose it, but I, could, I but... am older. I'm an older gentleman. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to think of cookies as a dessert, a snack, chocolate chip and peanut butter. And well, they were really good. But now cookies is targeted advertising. Shannon, am I wrong? It, that can be it. It yeah. says that they are small blocks of data created by a web server while a user is browsing a website and placed on the user's computer or the other device by the user's web browser. So that can be, I think, a use of them. Targeted it's apps. blocks of data? Yeah. It's blockchain? No, it's I don't. It's crypto? No. <laughs> crypto something? Okay, well, w to be continued with the cookies argument, but um, let's continue on this list, Chloe, because you're the guest. And I think it's important that we manifest. Job, skiing, and they're, they're on mushrooms and acid, that's fine. <laughs> it's fine, tall. it's acceptable. green eyes. Okay, tall. You're right up Shannon's alley. She will not accept short. She doesn't think short. Um, shorts are people. She doesn't think they're people. She doesn't acknowledge them. <laughs> um, tall, blue eyes. Green. Green eyes. Um, you know who had green eyes? The Incredible Hulk. I thought you were going to say Hitler. No, Hitler is, uh, I think he was brown eyes. Probably blue because he only likes Aryans. But he had brown eyes, but he liked, that's the that's the old, he had brown eyes but loved people oh. with blue eyes. Do you think he was secretly maybe like, he was overcompensating for the fact that he didn't have blue eyes? That's it why could he be. he was doing a genocide. It could be. He was doing a, um, overcompensating is a big thing. Yeah. But you want green Literally eyes. Literally big. <laughs> you you want green eyes. Mm -hmm. He yeah. had blue eyes, by the way. Hitler. Dark Hitler blue had blue eyes? eyes? Yep. Wow. You want to see a picture? Yeah. You can share this one. They get dark blue. Whoa, mm -hmm. those are scary. Those look like he's on mushrooms. This also could have been black and white, and maybe they changed the colors. Yes, the they make the mess with the colors now. That's what they do on it's the like apps these World days. World War II in color. I was going to watch World War II, but then they were like, World War II in colors. Are more people going to watch it because it's in color? Yeah, I want to watch World War II, but not in black and white. People saying that? No. Green eyes. So you're like a guy with a little Nordic something. Isn't green eyes like n n Nordic? It's not Irish. It's not Irish. There's Irish with green eyes, aren't they? They all have these like light blue eyes. I yeah, like. that's disgusting to you, Chloe? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just be honest. Yeah, I don't like it. Okay. So it reminds so, me of the working class. The blue collars are just disgusted, disgusting yeah. people. Because I want a guy with that apartment in Soho. Because my apartment's so small, I just want to yeah. find him, move in, get pregnant, and just let it, and then I could start drinking again. Yes. Well, not when you're pregnant, right? Because that's frowned upon. I don't know if you've heard... Uh, you can medical, have a glass. Medical news. And you could also face tune it to a Coke. Okay. But you, so. But you know, Mike. Yes, go ahead, Chloe. The older generations, they were like doing cocaine, drinking, smoking right. cigarettes yeah. before they had, while they were pregnant. There were um, no rules. There were no rules. And their, their thing was, we didn't know it was bad. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a cop out because the smoking people, smoking is kind of like the phones now where it's like. They they knew they didn't know to the extent of which it was bad, mm -hmm. but they knew it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know the extent of it. Of just like phones now, phones is like everybody just takes for granted and scrolls and does all this stuff online. It's on their phone twenty hours a day. But they know it's not good for you. No. But I mean, I'm sure there's been studies, but they're not cited. Everybody just accepts that that's what you do. Yeah. You're just on your phone all the time. Just like in the '50s, I think everybody just expect ex expected people to smoke. I also, I'm going to freeze my eggs because I'm yeah. getting older. Frozen eggs. And when you freeze your eggs, mm -hmm. you can choose if you want a boy or a girl baby. Is, oh, you can choose that then? Yeah, and I want a boy because we need an heir. Oh, that's so Game of Thrones. Yeah. Of you, an heir. Uh-huh. And somebody to take over at the Empire. Yes, of course. Okay. And then I'm going to move to Santa Barbara. Okay. To Montecito where um, Rob Lowe lives. All right. And I'm going to get an ocean. He's sober. Yeah, I'm going to get an oceanfront ranch with horses mm -hmm. and start drinking again. Why would you start drinking again, though? Because you're you living such a great life now that you're not drinking. I'm talking as a sober. Yeah, but, you know, it's just it's always been a passion of mine. Right. And I feel like once I get everything I want, that'll be the one thing I want still. But maybe I'll get to a place where I don't want it again. And I just think it could be fun for a little. And then I could go to like rehab in Malibu and dry out. Yes. And just be over it. How was rehab? 
It was a lot. I went to a lot of different do ones. Do you do yoga classes? Uh, yes, in rehab. Yeah. And uh, they also do like acupuncture. That's great. But it depends where you go. Right. So like I've gone to the fancy ones in Malibu mm-hmm. and then I've gone to like a state funded rehab. Oh. So it's like me and a lot of people that from sounds, prison and that someone terrible. actually, you might enjoy this. Th- we were in the cafeteria one day and uh, this guy who was crazy. Everyone thought he was like schizophrenic. Mm-hmm. He walks into the cafeteria and screams, I don't trust none of y'all. And then he right. ran out. And then his roommate goes, just so you know, that guy's got a gun. Mm. And so they he locked himself in a bathroom with his gun. And the SWAT team came to the rehab. Right. And they locked us all in the dining room. And this like kind of like older woman who's just an alcoholic, right. she gets up and goes, uh, Fuck the police. I got priors. <laughs> and she runs out. Wow, she said that to the SWAT team? Yeah. Did the guy actually have a gun or was somebody playing? No, uh, he actually prank? had a gun. He got arrested. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Well, because the kids are doing now, what's that called, Shannon? Swatting. It's where they call the SWAT team and then it's just fun for them. He hit his gun. We had bathrooms in our arms mm-hmm. and he hit it in the toilet. Uh, you know, Italians, we hide the guns behind, we tape it behind the toilet. Oh, maybe so, he did that. My roommate was a hell's angel there. Yeah. It was a lot. Was it? A, it was It was a girl. No, it a was. A girl hell's angel? No, she no, she wasn't. Her uh, husband and all her brothers were hell's angels. Mm. So like when I got into the room, she said, if you touch any of my shit, I'm calling my family and I will. they will murder you. And I was like, all right. Wow. So that's a bad uh, first day <laughs> yeah. with a roommate. If you touch anything, then I'm going to kill you. And it's like, hey, um, let's talk about a laundry schedule. Mm-hmm. Let's get to know each other a little bit. Maybe you guys can't have wine because it's rehab, but maybe uh, pray. Uh, well, no, you guys are the sober community in rehabs is they're big on board games. Tell me yeah. I'm wrong. And they had a pool table. So everyone would play pool. Right. A lot. Yeah. And uh, the hangout was the laundry room. And when you wanted to make out with a guy, they'd sneak in the laundry room. Right. Yeah, so that was like the thing. Um, the Hell's Angels lady, that sounds pretty great. Did after that initial friction, which happens sometimes, after you guys broke the ice, did you become really close? Yeah, we became friends. Yeah. Her name was Lisa. She was like 57 and a crackhead. Lisa. She relapsed after like 10 years. She was a rascal. She was a little bit of a rascal. Yeah. I mean, rascal is such a better word than crackhead. Crackhead feels like a label. Rascal mm-hmm. feels like a little bit of fun. Yeah, I agree. You know, you're, you get into a little bit of trouble. Yeah. But you're a, a good person. Yeah. Was she a good person? Yeah, she was nice. She told me, yeah. like, after, once she smoked crack, she decorated the whole Christmas tree for her family, like, yeah. right away. So. Family it's woman. one of the very few good things about Decorating again. Decorating a tree, and she's obviously... And decorating my apartment. She, um, She's a hell's angel's. The Hell's Angels. Do you like motorcycles yourself? or uh, Were you put off because you're anti-motorcycle? I was into dirt bikes when I was little. Oh, okay. See, my mom never let us have any. She she had a couple rules when we were growing up. She was like, no uh, motorcycles and no guns. So just don't even ask me. Because <laughs> no we guns. all want a BB guns growing up oh, and a dirt bike. I thought you meant like a Glock. No, no, no. I wanted a BB gun just starting out. But that's a gateway gun. Yeah, of is course. There, is there such a thing? Yes. As a definitely. gateway gun, it's taught me how to fire, and you get to you get to feel it in your hand. And um, <laughs> sounds like you really want one. Uh, t- but my mom ruined it. She moved she to ruined Texas. it by saying, "No, you can't have it. You can't have it." And I was like, "God, lady, lighten up. Yeah, yeah a little yeah. bit. Relax." It was a little much for me. So the Hell's Angels, and then the guy with um, he what was his what was his problem? He was just like a homeless dude who was schizophrenic. Yeah, and it, this was one of the state rehabs. Yeah. Now, at the really nice rehabs, yeah. What um, was the acupuncture great? Was the yoga great? Were you like, I want to stay? And no, they were trying to get you to go? I got kicked out after 12 days. What did you do? If you don't mind me asking. Um, cocaine, Xanax, oh, okay. sex, whippets. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. And then they brought me, and then the guy I was hooking up with, he got kicked out first, yeah. and then I was allowed to stay. And then I wasn't allowed to like leave the whatever rehab campus, mm-hmm. and they took away my phone and my wallet, because they let you have your phones at this one. And so they take everyone to outside AA meetings. 
Yeah. And it's like the alumni meeting for promises. So it's like 150 like douchey people. And I told them because I have a lot. Sometimes I lie. And I said, like, if you don't let me go to this meeting, like I will relapse and you will have blood on your hands. And so they let me go to the rehab. And I had a guy who was watching me and I went outside to smoke a cigarette. And when he turned around, I ran. And I didn't have a phone. I ran into, you know that uh, grocery store in L.A. called Ralph's? Or Ralph's? Yes. I ran in there, stole a bottle of vodka. Right. Then I went to a skate park, drank it all, came back drunk with the holding the vodka. I went into the AA meeting and I started screaming at everyone. Is that part of the meeting to confront to confront people? No, because I got in trouble. Oh, okay. So I was like, I was like, you guys don't even know sobriety. I got 10 days. You guys are a bunch of frauds. And then they called the ambulance. Yeah. This is a really crazy story. So they called the ambulance. They took me to the hospital. And I woke up there in the morning and they're like, you can go. It's like 7 a.m. on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I go downstairs. I'm trying to call the rehab over and over again. No one's answering to pick me up. And it was like really weird and dark mm -hmm. because the downstairs of the hospital was the pediatric wing kids yeah so i felt like a pediatric cancer wing and i felt like just the biggest piece of shit and then no one answers so i just leave and i'm just like walking around malibu trying to find a restaurant or a bar so i can start drinking and or break in and there's nothing so then across the street from the er at ucla mm -hmm. it was in la not malibu this one and uh they have all the frat houses so, for UCLA. Yeah, so I went up to the SAE house, and I knocked on the door, because I went to a school with Greek life, and I know, like, the password. You go, like, Phi Alpha, brother. And so the guy, like, had to let me in. I was like, do you guys have anything to fucking drink? And they're, like, snorting Adderall, studying for some test. That's what college is now. Test, yeah. yeah. And then they were like, uh, we have, like, some beer. And I was like, don't you have any hard liquor? And they're like, we had a jungle party last night, so we use it on the hot girls. Not saying you're not hot, but we can give you beers College guys can be rude sometimes. So I drank beers with them, and I was like giving them a lecture on being a drug addict. Mm -hmm. And then they called me an Uber. This smoke break is brought to you by YoDelta.com, the official getting high sponsor of the Gas Digital Network. And where did you go then? Back to the rehab. Back to the rehab. So that was my story. Wow, that's a lot. It's aggressive. That's really a lot. It's aggressive. I was that's young aggressive. then. That was young then. Now um, I'm older because you want to know why? Why? Today is my birthday. Is it your birthday, really? Uh-huh. You've joined us on your birthday? Yes. Wow, that's a big... Can we get a horn for that, Shannon? <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you, Mike. And I will not ask you how old you are because that's rude. 34. Okay. Leave I'm not ashamed. This. Right. I got but Botox. It's fine. But your shirt says 32. Do you feel like that's a little bit of a lie? <laughs> yeah, I'm a walking lie. You're a walking... God, haven't come to terms with it yet. No, I'll figure it out. Um, Why, if I could ask for some of our lower functioning whites, <laughs> um, why did you start uh, drinking and, and drugs? Well, I started like drinking a lot when I was like, you know, you know, like 14, mm -hmm. like house parties and stuff. But I think I'm one of seven kids. Okay. And so I'm a middle child. Yeah. And I don't get that much attention. Right. We and always I, want more attention. And I was always like trying to be the funny one. You know, you know how it goes. Yeah. And um, so then once I started drinking, I was like, I, like, I really was like trying to be the, I was like the life of the party. Right. I was really crazy. And then I went to college. And when I went to college, I went to the school Southern Methodist in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And they call it a farmy school because mm -hmm. there's so many drugs. And I started doing like tons of Xanax. A farmy school? Yeah, like. I thought that meant um, like a good harvest. No, like pharmacologist. Oh, pharmacologist. So they call it a farmy school. God, that's yeah. a different root word. So I just I started farming. doing a lot of drugs because everyone was doing it. And then, um, and then I just like, I got kicked out. And then I went to school in New York. What were you majoring in? Um, t TV and film. Okay. So you always wanted to do this. Well, when I had confidence back in the day, I really wanted to be like a screenwriter and a director yeah, right. and I wanted to take myself seriously. 
And then when I, you know, came back to New York for school, I was just kind of like, I'm a piece of shit. So I was just like, I want to do comedy now. And I was really nervous. So I took an improv class, right. which is horrible. At UC- I got kicked out too for drinking. Kicked out of, oh, drinking and improv? It was UCB is horrible. Right. So I went during the break to a bar and had some shots and then they all got mad. And, um, but then a girl in my class was like, cause I didn't like improv at all. Cause I don't like to say yes and. You, you know? like to say no, but? I'd say no. So like, oh. he, yeah, no, but. So people would say like, you, they'd say like one of their jokes and then I would just say no. Right. That's really terrible. And that's, you're breaking the rules of improv. Yeah. So then um, my fr- the girl in the class was like, you should try stand up. So right. then I went to an open mic and I liked it so much yeah. more. Because I'm probably like a narcissist, you know? I mean, we all are. So it's like, I would want to be alone. Right. Up there. Alone, spotlight it all on you. No one, no one hassling you. I'm sorry, I almost choked on my own self. <laughs> um, But what what number are you in the one through seven I'm birth like, order? I'm like, I'm third. So I'm not technically third. the middle child, but Bronze you know. medal kid? Is that what you guys call yourself? No, it, oh, like third oldest, bronze. Bronze medal. No, never heard that, but now I will. Because the first is a gold medal child. I'm definitely like a blue Second medal right now. You're third. No, I'm like last in the rankings. Do you get mad at your the seventh born because it's like the baby and they get all the attention on the first born? Well, he wasn't getting that much attention because my parents were getting divorced oh, at the God. time. He was like, did that hurt you? 10. Yeah, it made me yeah. feel bad. Yeah. Because like I was like, I liked attention, so right. I, I was like, this is a great reason to be sad, yeah. you know, and you can get a lot of attention when you're sad. Right, but were you actually sad? Yeah, I actually was, like, drinking a lot, so I wasn't sad, but 14? then once I, no, this was when I was 26. Oh, my, my God. Parents got, which is, who has seven kids and then gets divorced? Psycho. It's a lot of save the marriage babies. Yeah, maybe there was problems, and they were like, let's have another baby, let's have another baby, let's have another, but it's a great point. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the right way to go. So I think what? like I'm not a child of divorce, I'm an adult of divorce, right. which is feels almost worse because when you're a kid, you don't really know any different. Mm-hmm. And then when you're an when you're an adult, you just had to spend like the, your 26 years of your life watching your parents fight. Right. Did they th- was there a f- lot of fights before the divorce? Cuz sometimes it goes quiet. There's lo- towards the end. When I was like probably like 15 it started. Yeah. Wow, that's 9 years. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. They were done. They were not done having kids, though. But at that point, were they? Um, actually, maybe it was less because the youngest brother is five years younger than everyone. Okay. So, wow, that's pretty great. And what <laughs> state were you in? New York. You were in New York State, mm-hmm. and you grew up in the city. No, I grew up in Cold Spring Harbor on Long Island. It's okay, like the Long North Island. Shore. Yeah. But then, um, my parents, when I was fourteen, I went to boarding school, and oh. then my parents moved to the city full time. I uh. Can't imagine that you took to boarding school very well I, with what I've just heard. I loved I'm it. I'm a very, I, I pride myself on being perceptive. I loved it. And I'm an empath. You loved boarding school? There, I didn't have to talk to my parents. I got to do whatever I wanted. But what about those outfits? Oh, it, we didn't have a uniform. Oh, okay. But All you right. could, it was like still like scarves, the think, boys maybe. had to wear a coat and tie every yeah. day. Which just makes them look like bummed out stockbrokers <laughs> yeah. when they're like 12. Yeah, because they're stupid still. Okay. Um, all right, so that's a, like, but you're, when did you finally get clean? Um, the first time I went to rehab was in 2016, so mm-hmm. I was 26. 26. Now I'm 34 and I'm still working on it. Okay, but you've been clean for how long? Right now it's 60 days today. Okay, 60 days. Mm-hmm. Which great. is, I haven't had 60 days in two years. Oh my God, that's really good. So it feels good. That's really good. And has it, don't you feel good every day? It's feel like. Feel good every day. Uh, someone who was sober told me once, like, because I said I wanted to drink, he said, you'll feel worse if you do and better if you don't. Yes. And I always think about that. And then now that I'm like finally back in comedy, because I had to leave so many times to go to rehab, mm-hmm. I wasn't making any progress, and then I'd have to like start over in the right. scene. So now I'm just like really um, driven on it. Yes. Because I don't have anything else. Yeah. And um, I'm just, every time I want to drink, I just think about like getting on stage. And I'm like, I can't. Yeah. You know. Right. So. Um, yeah, because you don't want to feel, first of all, it derails you mm-hmm. awfully. Yeah. You know, it doesn't lead to anything good. No. And uh, I th- do you think it has something with the ability to defer gratification? What do you something mean? something to do with that. What does that mean exactly? That means it's like, uh, 
you know, they did this study with, um, I think it was like seven year olds or something back in the 70s when this was legal, it's illegal now. But they would put a kid in a room and mm-hmm. they would put two cookies in front of them and they would be like, if you wait five minutes, you can have five cookies, mm-hmm. but you're welcome to eat those cookies are yours. You're welcome yeah. to eat them. Yeah. And um, they would just leave the room and then they'd have the camera on and just watch the kids try to like go, ah, you know, they figured uh, some kids ate the cookies immediately yeah. and some kids just just sat there and just waited and got five cookies. That's amazing. So, and they measured it and the kids who waited and got five cookies, w- they tracked them. Mm-hmm. It was a long-term study and they were more successful Wow. in their lives. And like the kids who ate the cookies right away were more, more likely to have kids younger, to have drinking and alcohol issues, to Whoa. like, you know, so it's like the whole point of the study was they were measuring a child's ability to defer gratification Mm -hmm. and how that would play out later in life that's cool yeah i like that but if i if someone put like two beers in front of me and they said you get five later i just drink the two right away. you would drink the two then i'd go to ralph's and steal a bottle of fuck right i mean that sounds like happy hour to me (laughs) sad hour sad hour yes in this case Mm -hmm. yeah but i think uh alcohol is like you know you read I, I've never read the book, but it's this book on uh, to help you stop drinking, which is basically Alan Carr. I, I don't Easy know which way to stop drinking. Yeah, it's he like something that everybody one. reads. Yeah. Everybody reads, but it's like um, if you just think about it as it's just you're just poisoning yourself. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much kind of what it is. The weird part about his books, I've read the smoking one. Um, you are supposed to continue smoking while you read the whole book, and then like the last page is like, "Have your final cigarette, say goodbye." Wow, I Have think it's a ritual. That would be cool if the last page was an ashtray. <laughs> you put it out, and then um, that's you started, really smart. You started, um, and then there was the next page was like Nicorette gum. Wow, you know, I mean, just I'm just I'm an entrepreneur spitballing. myself. I'm spitballing. People do this when they. This is a think tank. Yeah. This is a little bit of a think tank. We're having a great episode. Really? Chloe, do you think you're having a good episode? I don't know if I'm being too serious. No, I think you're having a great episode. Thank you. We like to take the investigation wherever it goes. I mm-hmm. did not know you. I'm having fun getting to know you. Yes. Um, but, I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Well, um, I'm pretty... Uh, the fans kind of know where I came from. Northeast Ohio, mm-hmm. um, Florida, back to Northeast Ohio, back to Florida, back and forth. Um, Went to Penn State University, Mm. Philadelphia for eight years, and then at the end of, started stand-up comedy in 2000. While in in Philadelphia? In Philadelphia for three years. I did three years in Philly. That's comedy once a week, I would say. That's when I officially started doing open mics at least once a week. Moved to New York, end of 2003. I'm coming up on my 20-year anniversary. Wow. And then, um, and then just went, hard stand-up comedy since the end of 2003 in New York, and I've been here ever since. Do you feel like you're addicted to stand-up? No, I'm not. Were you ever? Uh, I felt like I was addicted to um, joke writing and and the outcomes. The the outcomes, I felt I was not addicted to, but I would just like keep pushing like this is what i'm i was always a very determined like Mm -hmm. this is what i'm doing this is what i'm doing and for years and years and years and years so i don't know if i was addicted to it but it was like you lock on to something and then you don't let it go but it's changed my attitude has changed over the years in terms of like being a little bit a little bit more lighthearted, taking a different approach to it like still develop i still love it still developing material and having fun with it yeah. but having more fun with it instead of forcing myself into a regimen to sit down and write and turn out material it's like mm-hmm. the whole point of it is to have fun and yeah. if you're having fun then the crowd will have fun and there's a certain lightheartedness that i didn't have at the beginning that i have now where it uh I feel like it it translates better and it makes for better shows, better performances. I feel better about mm-hmm. it. I'm a very intense guy. Yeah. So it it's uh just better all the way around, but it like takes work. Yeah, and for my comedy it's like um I've been doing so much mate- first I was doing so much material on like getting dumped and like feeling bad for myself yeah. and like being a psycho and then now I've been doing so much material on like rehab and being an addict and I'm I'm so over it right now because I'm like, I don't like, I want to get sober. Like, I don't want to keep reliving all of this. Right. And I don't want to get like pigeonholed into 
just being a comic who only talks about like rehab and stuff. So I've been trying to like write other stuff now and it's a lot more lighthearted and it's more lighthearted. It's lighthearted and it's great. It's great to be lighthearted. And uh, it's also a lot, you know, as you know, I don't know if our fans know, it's a lot of trial and error. Yeah. So you go out there, you take shots, and then you make mental notes of, oh, this was good, this wasn't. Okay, let me keep that. Let me move that. Let me work that. It's all a process. Like, And the process is really what you have to fall in love with, not the outcomes. Mm-hmm. Because if you, fall, if you try to fall in love with the outcomes, you'll self-destruct in this business. You have to fall in love with the process of it. Does this happen to you? I'm sure that like sometimes you get like really attached to a bit and yes. the audience doesn't like it. Right. And I, I just like you have to keep tr- I just keep trying it. I just like this is not really I have had that and I go this is not relatable enough. It's not it's my fault. It's not I'm not relating. I'm not tapping into something that the audience is feeling and I and there's a way to do it. I just have to figure out how mm-hmm. to do it. Yeah, that's smart. Solutions. I like that. That's one of my affirmations being solutions orientated. Chloe? I say I love you in the mirror. That's great. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, then I say I want to make money. Yes. Well, you're supposed to do, you're supposed to already have money. The whole, that's how you're supposed to manifest it. Oh. I have money. I am rich. Oh, I'm I rich. am in love. I am in love. I, I am, am. I am friends with Rob Lowe. I am six. I am friends with Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe is calling me. <laughs> Rob Lowe is calling me right now. Rob Lowe is calling me. I am having sex with Rob Lowe. I'm having sex with Rob. He's married, I think, though. I'm having an affair. I think is a more um, Women cheat. Women do cheat. I'm having an affair with Rob Lowe. I like that. I'll say that in the mirror later. Well, sometimes I do affirmations in real life. Like if I'm arguing with my significant partner, I go, you're throwing me a lot of adversity right now, but I am transmuting it into victory. I'm transmuting the adversity that you're throwing me into victory. Wow. I'm always transmuting your adversity into victory. It's all about being in the vortex. Yes. That's what they call it. Yes. Tuned in, tapped in, and turned on in the vortex, baby. Booked and blessed. You are my co-creator in this podcast, 36 minutes in. And I think we should be bold. If Is Shannon still a member of the podcast, Natalie? Or she had what's to step happening? out to go to the bathroom. Women's but, Month? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Let's go to plugs. Should we go to plugs? Natalie, is that okay? From the production side yeah, of things? Yeah, that's okay. Let's go to plugs and then we'll do some investigations. Cool. Um, I'm at Comic Mike V on all social media platforms in case you've been living under a rock at Comic Mike V. Follow me. Thank you for joining us on the YouTube premiere, which has moved Wednesday, 6 p.m. Thank you for joining us on YouTube every Wednesday at 6 p.m. I repeat things like their affirmations to our smart, low-income smart. whites. Um um, for my schedule, MikeVecchione.com, I have dates coming up, Madison, Wisconsin, Comedy on State, and then at the end of the month, uh, Tampa Side Splitters, two of my favorite clubs in the country, then Moon Tower in April, Comedy Festival in Austin, those are the three things, and the big thing, um, a special premiere on uh, YouTube, Nate Bargatze's YouTube page, 800 Pound Gorilla's YouTube page, The Attractives. March 24th, support your boy. I believe it's going to be at 5.30. YouTube, The Attractives, my special that I've been waiting to drop, directed by uh, Nate Borgazzi and wow. produced by Nate and 800 Pound Gorilla. So 5.30, um, March 24th, The Attractives. Support your boy. Um, please continue to support this podcast. We love our fans. We're tough love, but we do love you. And um, that's all I got. Chloe, what do you have? Um, <clears throat> you can follow me on Instagram at Chloe LeBranch. I have a podcast called The Close Show Podcast. We're on season 17. Yeah. It's, wow. Sometimes the season episodes are like two episodes. So basically a new season starts every time after I find a bottle of vodka. And um, then also I'm headlining Nick's Comedy Stop on the 24th and the 25th. And um, I don't have anything else to say. That's good. Just follow Chloe. Where yeah. again? At, at Chloe LeBranch. At Chloe LeBranch. Shannon. You can follow me on Instagram at ShannonLee6982. Listen to my podcast, The Thing Is. Ding, we talk about bad dates, fighting, and ghosts. Wherever you listen to Mike Vecchio and Investigates, you can also watch it live for free. Every single Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern at gasdigitalnetwork.com slash live. That's absolutely free. But the best way to support the show is to go to gasdigitalnetwork.com, use promo code MVI. 
That'll give you a one-week free trial, which gives you access to every every single episode of this show that we've ever done, as well as every show on uh, every episode of every show on the Gas Digital Network. Wow. Uh, if you listen on iTunes, YouTube, wherever else you listen, make sure to rate, review, leave a comment, subscribe, tell a friend. Every little bit of interaction helps the show to grow. Go to podcastmarch.com for t-shirts, hoodies, and mugs. And if you have your own video investigation to submit, send it into Mike Vecchio and investigates at gmail.com. You heard her. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get to some investigations. Chloe, are you ready to investigate? Yeah, but really quick. Yes. I'd love to buy some merch. Do we have any merch available? I, I think so. Let me let me look after the show. I'll go on to the website. I love merch. <laughs> the Italians are here? Yes. I th- does that, that still... Did we ever put that into the store? I don't know if we ever put it. that to the store. We're a little um, light on the merch, but we'll check into it. Um, let's go to the first investigation. Parents say growth hormones boosts kids' chances of success. Shannon? Yeah, so... Um, what is happening in the um, with these parents? So maybe this is something that you'll be doing at some point, Chloe, with your children, because this is for, like, rich people. So when you find your skiing, <laughs> uh, slightly drug-addicted husband... Tall, green-eyed, <laughs> um, white-collared job skiing husband uh, so apparently this is what they're what rich people are currently doing is around what are rich people currently doing shannon they are injecting their their children with growth hormones sounds right <laughs> uh the story that it references here is this one particular dad um his son at 12 years old was four feet five inches tall and he yeah. ran, he ranked in the first percentile on the growth chart mm-hmm. uh, so he was eager to eager to improve the kids circumstances and he went to a pediatric endocrinologist and uh, they decided to give him the growth hormone, hormone, and within eight months, he grew three inches. Mm. Wow. It cost $3,000 um, after the insurance. And I guess they're basically like, it, it's going to help the kids in the future. It's going to make them stronger, make them bigger. The insurance covers it? The height yeah. insurance covers it? No, it's <laughs> the height insurance. <laughs> is it, does it specifically height insurance? No. If you have a tiny baby? <laughs> oh, that would be great. That should be a thing. Height insurance. Yeah, I like that. For you, Shannon. <laughs> it would be great. Shannon only likes talls. <laughs> it says, <laughs> Robert and his wife chose to give their son human growth hormone at a cost of roughly $3,000 before meeting their insurance deductible. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, what's the deductible? The deductible is three grand. Is that what that means, Shannon? It says before meeting it. I don't before know. Before meeting the adduct is it a dating app? <laughs> <laughs> before meeting the deductible? Three thousand dollars is a chunk of change to go from four five to four eight. Yeah. I mean, that's a little much. Do they expect it to um do they expect him to grow more from this? Or does he have to get another injection? I think they expect it. I think what they expect is to like kind of boost the whole process a little bit because he's only 12 so right. like i feel like he's probably still going through puberty yeah i feel like i know guys that they didn't like shoot up until they were like 15 or 16 not shoot up oh, shoot shooting sorry. up that's <laughs> yes. micro <God. laughs> she's triggering us i'm sorry <laughs> um four five to four can't that mess with your natural growth hormones so the in this article the only thing that it says as far as uh, negative results is that it could cause heart problems later in life which I think you see with bodybuilders is they have enlarged hearts from the growth hormone that they right. take. Right. It's a really bad problem. That is a that's kind of a big problem um having heart trouble later in life. Yeah. You know? Maybe. And 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 for those fans at home following this story and being confused by it because it's a lot of turns here. An enlarged heart is different from a big heart. We have big hearts on this show, not enlarged <laughs> hearts. Thank God. <laughs> Chloe, what about this? First impressions? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty short. Yeah. But I I mean, I guess I mean, it's you're for... probably going to have a short kid, probably going to be disadvantaged because of the shortness. True, true, true. Yeah, He's so do be you an idiot. Well, do you do you, do you support it, the growth hormone? Do you think the growth hormones make their brains bigger? I don't know if it has an effect on the brain. Probably it has an does. effect on it probably dulls them down a little bit because the talls I don't think are as sharp as the cuz when you're shorter it's like you're the underdog. Yeah. And the and we all look at tall people like you think you're better than me. Mm-hmm. And they're not. And but they think they are. So I think when you're shorter you have to work harder. You're always working from a dis, uh, you know, a point of the underdog. Yeah, like sometimes at a bar, I'll stand on a chair yeah. and just look around and I think, oh, this is a whole different world. It is a whole different world. 
And do you give yourself, instead of gro- growth hormone, standing on a chair also is another option. I could do that in the mirror. I think in Asian countries, sh- Shannon, are they putting um, shin, something in people's oh, shins yeah. in order to make them taller? Well, they do that here too. It's a, like a, a leg implant surgery and it takes, depending, you can, you can do, I think, three to six inches. Three inches takes six months to heal and six inches takes 12 months to heal. Mm-hmm. But the whole healing time, you're in agony because yeah. they put the implants in and then they slowly expand it. Ugh. So you're just always in pain because you're always healing. It's like a palate year. expander for your yes. teeth. Yeah, yes. oh my God. That's a year off of walking? Yeah. You're taking a year off of a sabbatical from yeah. walking? I'm trying to think. I don't think they do both. I'm trying to think if they do both. I haven't, let me look it up again. What if we did... Um, um, the implants in the shins and a growth hormone. Is that, that's mine? Did I just blow your minds? <laughs> you did. It's great. Because idea. that would be like, you're super tall then. Yeah. There's no stopping it's you. It's like you're on the Knicks. Yes. You're a pro basketball player. <laughs> would you inject your short child with growth hormone, Chloe? I don't even think I would inject them with like hormones to transition. No? I think it's like, I just... I just think that they should just that part uh, do that when you're 18 18 you know make your decision then right so I was babysitting right Mm -hmm. and I babysat for this like family there and the girls were in third or fourth grade right and uh, they also went to a dyslexic school so there's a lot of problems going on with those kids and one of not a school yeah special in New York and so um, they had these girls, one of their best friends was this girl named Ellie mm-hmm. and Ellie was really tall, like right. taller than all of them. She had really big feet too. God, and then it turns out that Ellie was actually Ethan. Okay. She changed her name right. when she was a boy. Right. And she started taking hormones to transition in the third grade. Right. Cause that's when she decided that she wanted to be a girl from a boy. And then Ellie had a boyfriend right. named William. Okay. But no one in the school knew, except for some of her friends, that she was really a boy. Right. And so she started dating William, mm-hmm. hottest guy in the class. Yeah. And then she decided that one day, like on Monday, mm-hmm. she was going to tell William right. on the playground that she had a dick. Mm-hmm. And she told William, mm-hmm. and he said he still wanted to be with her. Right. And it was just, I was like, I never had to because be- Because they, <laughs> using the appropriate pronoun, because they were tall. Oh. Let me bring it back to the original thing. But she's a girl. Do guys like tall girls? It, does, it just matters. Tall is what matters here. Wow. Yeah. So tall, the answer is yes. You get whoever you want, whatever you yeah. want. Because tall is what matters. And in order to be tall, if you have to do a growth hormone, even if it causes heart failure, mm-hmm. you do it. Yeah. But it's also like, it's funny because they're all dyslexic, so... Mm-hmm. They didn't even know which bathroom was the women's or the men's anyway. <laughs> right, but there's um but don't they put pictures on the bathrooms? Uh I don't or know. Or maybe if they one do bathroom that. I don't know if with they a do big lot. You know what I love about um I love a singular bathroom, mm-hmm. but I like it when there's a lot of locks. Yeah, on it. yeah, yeah. Do you ever go to a public bathroom and then there's there's a lock, there's a bolt, there's a chain. It's like it's like a you're barricaded in there. I never seen the chain. In the yeah, I love that. It makes me feel safe when where, I'm in a public. Bathroom. Where's the place that you found that? Truck stops. It's but fun. the only thing that's not unlocked is the glory hall. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> it could be. Um, but it's only one person at a time in there, so good luck. One person and two dicks. All right. <laughs> that could be. Let's go to the next one. Bikini clad coeds brawl on the beach, and we have video of this, guys. Bikini clad coeds brawl on the beach in Wild Spring Break video. Right, wanna watch the video first? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, Shanna, could you describe what happened there for our fans who can't afford a computer? Yeah. So uh, it's a spring break just started in Florida, mm-hmm. in Fort Lauderdale. And so uh, there's a bunch of guys in a circle, two chicks in the middle, and they uh, kind of go at each other. And then the girl at the bottom at the end uh, lost her top. Okay. Well, I mean, what about the physical 
it was like what was happening earlier was it's called an Oklahoma drill. Oh, what's that? It's they said it was an Oklahoma drill in the article, but it's not actually an Oklahoma drill. An Oklahoma drill is is um, when there's it's a football drill. Uh-huh. There's two bags set up, and then there's an offensive guy and a defensive guy, and they clash. The defensive guy, um, the offensive guy's job is to block the defensive guy, and there's a running back behind. It's three people: offensive, blocker, tackler, and then a running back, and the offensive and defensive guys collide and the running back tries to get through. The defensive guy has to um, separate from the blocker and then tackle the runner. Wow. Is what is supposed to happen. That's from my understanding what an Oklahoma drill is. I don't know. They were doing a variation of it where it's a different drill where two people lay head to head. One has the ball and one doesn't. And on the whistle, they both get up. The person without the ball tackles the person with the ball. Whoa. So I don't know what... I I haven't played football in 40, 30 years. And I would say it was one of, I don't know what the actual drills are called, but those are two different. It sounds like they were doing the second one on that. So the guys were doing it first, and then they cheered the girls on, and then the girls did it, and that's what you wow. saw. Wow. Spring break really has taken a turn. Do you Have you ever been on spring break? Or yeah. Or your life has been spring break? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I have. Okay. I went to Cancun once. All right. That sounds fun, but it's dangerous now because of fentanyl. Yeah, it's definitely dangerous. Yeah. So um, uh, I just think this is good old-fashioned fun, Shannon. Were the cops called? No, it does say that they they had to be uh, pulled apart, though. They were fighting? It says they had to be separated from each other, so I guess maybe it got more serious. Yeah, because that looked like fun there. Yeah. It looked like she was kind of dr- could have been drowning, the right. other girl. Here, right. There's one still of it. Maybe the girl. Maybe the girl. Okay, they they look it. they look like they're having fun still there, you know, and it looks like it broke into it started as football and then it turned into an MMA type <laughs> thing. But years ago, Fort Lauderdale. I don't know how much experience you have with Florida, Chloe. I, but I do. Fl- Flor- Fort Lauderdale was like I remember when I was uh, like young. There, it was like, oh, we don't want spring break. It's too much trouble. These kids are a nightmare. The cops have to be called all the time. It's dangerous. We want them, like the older people were like, we want go somewhere else for spring break. And then they did. They started going other places for spring break. And then the, you know, the economy stopped. You know, they get made, we were making all this money from these kids during these two weeks. And then once they said, you're not welcome here, they went somewhere else and the economy dropped. So they were like, please come back. Oh my God, that's amazing. So, I mean, let them play football, yeah. I guess. I guess is the... Um, it's the Fort Lauderdale drill. Yes, the Fort Lauderdale drill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, spring break. And women can do it too, Shannon. Not just men. Women can also do the drill. Thanks. Um, how did it end up, Shannon? Um, that was that was it, that they got they got pulled apart. Okay. Um, and it's just talking about how um, spring break is crazier this year. This is the first time they're fully back, they're saying, since 2019, which right. I don't think that's true because I think we've been seeing these videos for a while. Yeah. And that people, they're opting to go to Florida instead of Mexico because of the uh, kidnappings of America. Yes. The Americans, it's happening. They're not that crazy and wild that they need to be kidnapped. <laughs> that's a bad end of the spring break to be kidnapped <laughs> and then a ransom has to be put. Would your parents pay a ransom? For, yeah. Probably. they would. I think mine would too. Yeah. I mean, my mother is 82, so you know, I don't know. She would, it would take her a while to understand the ransom. Yeah. But once she did, I mean, she would pay. She loves me very much. That's good. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah. Your mama's boy. Yes. Italian. Yes. That's right. Was raised good. Mm-hmm. But according to you, you only like tall with green eyes, and that's more um, like Netherlands. Really? Yeah, I would okay. say. Netherland, Netherland guys. Mm-hmm. Guys uh, who are Dutch. I, I, also Dutch. Wanna, I also want to marry a Jew. Oh, Jewish? I heard they make great husbands and they're good with money. Are you Jewish? No. Are you Christian? Yeah. Scientologist? No. That's better than improv as a gateway into um, <laughs> show business. Okay, um, well, let's move on, Shannon. And these is some advice now. We're going to hit some Dear Abbeys. Are great. you ready to give out some advice? Yeah, of course. Always. Uh, Dear Abby, my boyfriend will not stop dating his exes. Shannon, what is going on here? Whoa. Um, wait, I'm confused between two of them. Okay, yeah, it's definitely this one. Okay. Dear Abby, my boyfriend... Not as confused as um, she is. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Abby, my boyfriend and I have been together... This is texting exes, right? 
Yeah, okay. she, he's texting exes. Okay. My boyfriend and I have been t- uh, together six years. We are both divorced. We plan on being married in six months. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a perfect partner except for one thing. Every- What's this one thing, <laughs> Shannon? Let me set up the fans. Okay. Every holiday, he jumps out of bed in the morning takes it and takes his phone with him into the bathroom. Right. There, he texts his ex-wife and ex-girlfriend... He feels the need to wish them a happy whatever holiday it is, and this hurts my feelings. But why does he rush into the bathroom, which he knows exactly what he's doing? Wouldn't you rush into the bathroom to hide it? Why are you rushing into the bathroom and if there's complete transparency with what he's doing? Well, also, how does she know who he's texting? Is she looking through his phone? Right. That's a dishonest move. I think once you start looking through each other's phones, the relationship is done. You think it's done then? It's, oh, that, it can't be saved? No, I think once that starts, it's just the yeah. trust is gone. Right. Because if you look hard enough, you're going to find something. You're going to find something. If you, keep, if you look really right. hard, you know, you will find something that will upset you. Yes. Even if it's a, t- a text that's slightly something? Yeah. And you could misinterpret it, though. Is that possible? Of course. Wow. You say looking through each other's phones is... The death of it, 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 it can't be saved. I think it's over once that starts happening. Even through a Skype camp counseling? There was a guy. Something through the phone? I had a boyfriend yeah. and I used to hook up with this other guy. And right. then. We, Cheating? No. Okay. We were started text. No, actually my boyfriend and I went on a break. Okay. And I started hooking up with this other guy and yes. he didn't hook up with anybody. And then after when I we got back together and he like knew about it and he was just like really angry and upset and I felt really bad. So Mm -hmm. I like let him be like kind of mean to me in a way. And then, so I changed the guys who I used to be hooking up with name in my phone to a different name. Dad. Yeah. Mom. (laughs) And, um, and then my ex started, my boyfriend at the time started reading through my phone and then he looked at the guy's, the number in it Yeah. and was like, he went, when I, I was out at a party he took my bat- phone into the bathroom and looked at it and then just started yelling at me in front yeah. of everyone. Through the bathroom door? <laughs> no. No, he came out of the bathroom. Yeah. Um, and was the relationship over? We dated for like a little longer, but it was just so done. It was done. It was just miserable. Yeah. I would say the point is when the, when you go on the break. That's when it's When over. you go on the break, it's A break kind of is over. a breakup, they say. Yeah, it's it's the first step. And, we, you know, we're creatures of habit, so you're with somebody for a long time. Mm-hmm. You need to kind of ease out of it. So it's like, let's go on the break is the first step. Mm-hmm. You're trying to step out of the yeah. relationship. And then they also say, like, people get back together mm-hmm. and they say, like, it, an ex is an ex for a reason. Yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. But do you find that there's a difference between the breaker up er and the breaker up e? The breaker up er has the reasons. The breaker up e is just blindsided because they're like, I thought this was good. What, what are we doing? Every relationship I've ever been dumped in, I was like, always shocked i was like oh my god i thought this was good whatever in every relationship i've ever broken up i was like oh i know the reasons yeah you know what i mean well i never knew or understood that sometimes the person who breaks up with you is sad too oh i'm sure they're sad the person who breaks up is sad also but it's like the person who breaks up has the reasons so when they get sad they go, oh yeah, but it's this, this, and this. This would never work. So they, there's they, they f- there's that emotion of sadness, but then they fall back on the reasons, and they go, it's this, this, and this, and then they have they move on. Just being sad, the reasons help you accept the sadness more mm-hmm. versus the one who's blindsided, the breaker up e. It just goes, I just want this person to get hit by a bus. Yeah, they're just in, they're just wallowing in their own. So they, why did this happen? Mm-hmm. This person must have been thinking this for a long time. What did I do wrong? What did I say? What maybe if I was a different person? All kinds of like self doubt and all that stuff creeps in. Well, I I know with my last boyfriend, it was like kind of it was just started to get it was just started to not work out. Yeah, and I started to like say little things like I feel like you don't care about my feelings. Yeah, you don't hug me enough. Yeah, like. I just, you know, I don't know if I'm happy. I don't know if I can do this. And then one day he just dumped me. Right. And it was almost, and then I was like, I'm so blindsided. I can't believe he did this to me. How horrible. But, you know, actually I was instigating it. Yes, you were, and you don't. And I made him insecure in the relationship. Well, the trick is you don't see any of it until after you're out of it for six months. Yeah. Like you look back, you look, oh, this would have, this was this, this was this. But you, the thing is you can't see it while you're in it. No. Do you think that's what happened here, Shannon? With us? Uh, no, with a, this <laughs> during girl, the podcast. This girl, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this girl with a boyfriend, and she's he's just 
Do you marry him anyway, Shannon? I feel like maybe we need more information because if if the only thing that he if it's true that the only thing he's doing is texting his exes on holidays right. mm-hmm. is that such a big deal but also what's with the ex-girlfriend does he have kids with both of them like is there some sort of connection ex-wife with, ex-girlfriend because an ex-wife like i can understand that a little bit more than an ex-girlfriend why are you keeping in touch with her right it's i don't know on the holidays i don't talk to um, any of my exes ever. no do you? Not even during the Jewish holidays? <laughs> the high holidays? <laughs> Maybe this person is Jewish. The and high holidays, you know, when they're on mushrooms. Yeah, the high. <laughs> it does so The high. high holidays. My boyfriend won't stop texting his exes. Yes, if this is in fact... And what about the fact, Shannon and Chloe, if he's just doing that innocently, it's everything that it looks like on face value, but she goes, hey... It hurts me. Don't do this again. If if it was everything, if it were just at face value, why is he h- trying to hide it? Why is he running into the bathroom? That's a problem. But he might be taking pictures of his pee. <laughs> yeah. And sending, sending it. Sending his dick. Decorated. It might be decorated <laughs> with ornaments uh, and stuff as... The Easter bunny. Something. <laughs> that could be some kind of a... His Easter eggs are his balls. He painted them. It could be a meme. Is that a <laughs> meme, Shannon? It could Natalie, be. Natalie, can we check with you? <laughs> Is that some sort of a meme? That could be a meme. Do okay. You, well, back to something we spoke about earlier. Yes. Do you think that the woman telling him not to text is controlling? Is she controlling now? Yeah. You're just wishing your ex is um, something on a happy... N- and if uh, you yeah. tell someone not to do someone something in a relationship, they'll yeah. start to feel trapped. Well, if you say don't do it, but what if you say, and I learned this in therapy, it hurts me when you do this. You're not saying not to do it. Mm. You're saying it hurts me when you do this. And then if they say back, I'm sorry you feel that Ooh. way. They're a narcissist. I yes. learned that in therapy. They're a toxic narcissist. They don't say to you, I'm sorry I did that. They yeah. say, I'm sorry you feel that yes. way. That's the meanest thing. It's so God, mean. that sucks. Yeah. That's skirting the issue. Uh-huh. God. Asshole. Makes me so mad. It's like to an audience when you bomb. I'm like, I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry you feel that way. Instead of trying to go out there and actively bring them in. <laughs> Didn't do your job. Yeah, you got to do your job. But there are bad audiences, too. Mm. But it's like you have to do your responsibility. Yeah. Um, Let's go to the next one, Shannon. I mean, I don't know what to tell this woman. I guess my advice would be say, hey, it hurts me when you do this. I should be everything you need. Why am I not everything you need? Is that right? Is that a right thing to say? Do you want to know what Abby's response was? Yeah, what did Abby say? She said, I'll assume that sometime over the past six years you've discussed this at least once with your boyfriend. This means he knows that when he jumps out of bed, takes his phone and hides in the bathroom to text his exes, it makes you feel insecure. Yes. And then she basically says that you should, if you think he's still in love with his ex-wife, don't marry him. But if if it's if you guys do intend to continue on to the next level, to go to premarital counseling. Yeah, I kind of first of all, pre I don't I don't love premarital counseling when you're dating. Yeah, it's yeah, I actually it's don't love much. that. That just means but you have like, to get engaged. You just got to be straight up. Be like, look, when you do this, it hurts my feelings. What's the deal? What? What is? What is this? Just what is it? Why? Yeah, why? What are you doing, dude? Just kind of like on the table. I like that. Um, and if you say, dude, it makes it lighter. Yeah, it makes it lighter. It's like, what is this, bro? Yeah, let's bro, go. I'm let's not. uh, let's uh, on the table. We put it all on the table. It's not like, baby, why are you doing this? Oh no. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. You're like, a... bro, it's yeah. like I'm in charge. And if this doesn't work out, I'm going to go have a butt BL smoothie. Gee, well, it's hard. not even that. It's just like you're taking over the situation with you're being honest with your feelings. Hey, this hurts me. What's the deal? Why do you keep doing it? Why do you actively keep doing it? Let's just be together. Let's shut the rest of the world out. Let's shoot for the stars. Let's be happy. Yes. Let's do happiness together. I love it. And let's just cut everybody else out of our lives like this. <laughs> You know, our exes, everybody. Yeah. And that could be toxic the other way because then he could be like, stay away from your family and I'm going to control your finances. Yeah. Is that and then a red if, flag? And then if he's like, and then if you're like, let's cut everything out. Like yes. Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, yes. there will be no holidays. There will be no holidays. That's a great point, Chloe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, because you wanted it that way, mm-hmm. you know, because you had to push it with your exes. So now there's no holidays. We will not celebrate. There is anything. no Santa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love extremes. I love going in the complete opposite direction. Yes, I love it. Don't you, you love that? Throw them a curveball. Yes. They blindside you, you curveball them. This dear Abby had it all wrong. It's like if a guy dumps me next time, I'm going to say, whatever, I'm gay. Yes. You flip it on him. Yeah. I've been gay the whole time. Gay the whole time. God, I love that. <laughs> 
Um, Dear Abby, I'm dating outside my marriage and I don't think I'm being unfaithful. Signed, delusional. This one is psychotic. Shannon, I just read you it. hate this one. <laughs> I hate this one you hate so it much. worse than um, short people trying to be tall. <laughs> yeah, saying just hi. Yes. <laughs> yes. And saying just hi. Shannon hates that. <laughs> people say hi on dating apps. Isn't it annoying? Okay, we won't get into it again. Okay, Dear Abby. I have been dating outside my marriage. My husband doesn't know. It's nothing serious, just dinner, drinks, and dancing. All the men have been single. I would never go out with a married man. That is so aggravating. Uh, All of them have a respect in my boundaries. I don't want to be unfaithful to my husband. I'm just having a little fun. Do you think a little goodnight kiss would be okay to show my appreciation? Slightly naughty in New Mexico. She's slightly naughty. And there's like only about... 110 people in New Mexico. I mean, she's <laughs> saying her boundaries doesn't seem like she has boundaries. No, she doesn't have any boundaries. She's a Chloe. bitch. She's a liar. Well, she's saying she's not going to have. She's not having sex with any of them. She's just. Um, but is she having an emotional affair? Yes, Chloe? that's that's honestly worse. It's actually worse to have an emotional affair. Yes, that's worse on the woman. Yeah, emotional affairs right. when they just like love someone else. It's yeah. like oh my god, but if they just put their pee pee in someone else. You're like, you know what? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, because feelings are more of a penetration than the actual physical genitalia. That really, I think, more is like, I'm not good enough. Other, like, when it's like, if a guy just has sex with someone else, it's kind of like, you know what? Humans are not meant to be monogamous. Is that a blanket statement? That's what they say, because animals aren't. Yeah. And we're a form of animal. Uh Uh-huh. But we're the highest thinking form of animal. We have consciousness. We can make decisions. Does that play into it, Chloe? Um, you know, actually, um, penguins mate for life. Penguins mate for life. So, so you say they're kind of doing better than us. Men in tuxes are more <laughs> faithful. Yeah, because that's what penguins look like. Um. Okay. So you're against this woman. Yeah. She's she, a, what she's doing is she's is emotionally a, cheating. Idiot, idiot. She's going out with guys for dinner. And drinks and dancing, and now she's pushing the envelope for a good night kiss. I mean, that's you can't even be say you're going to a yoga class because that's a long evening. Right, that's a long evening, and I wonder what she tells her husband. Maybe she's, she's a at. nurse and pretends she's working a night shift. Shift work is the enemy of relationships, I would say. Wow, she's a fake nurse. She's faking an entire profession. Yeah, to go have fun. Yeah, and dance. Uh huh. Dance like no one's watching, or you hope that no one's watching. That's geni- right, Shannon. That's genius. Can we also say that, uh, that her contradic- uh, contradiction in this is she said that all of the men she's dating have been single. I would never go out with a married man. She's trying to say that she's moral. But she's a moral person. She would never break up someone's marriage except her own. Right. That doesn't make any sense because if she actually said that this was just a friendship thing and she does go out with married men because it's not anything bad, that would make more sense. This is like friends without benefits. Well, do they know? <laughs> Unless they have good insurance. <laughs> That's there's something there. There's but something. Do there. they know she's married? I don't know. She kind of yeah. sc- slipped. Yeah, over she but slips that one by them. All she says is that they respect her boundaries, but it seems like she's trying to now push her own boundaries by starting to kiss. And then once you start to kiss, it's just a, it's gonna be one week, and they're gonna be banging. Yeah. Does yeah. she have a hidden agenda? Yes. Do you think? She's a lot. She's yeah. not really being honest with Abby. Let's see what Abby has to say, and then we have to wrap up. <laughs> okay, yeah. I really appreciate Abby's response here. Dear Slightly Naughty, because uh, the last question was, do you think a, a goodnight kiss would be inappropriate? And she says, no, I do not. A goodnight kiss would be no more appropriate than dating on the sly has been. A better solution would be for you to teach your husband to dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Abby was short and sweet to that <laughs> yes. one. Yeah, Abby called her on the carpet. What would you say to her? I would say, yeah, you got to get your marriage in line. You know, don't teach your husband to dance. How about you stay home once in a while dancing, with your husband? Dancing around the issue. That's f- Chloe, thank you for putting it that way. Thank you. I think you put an exclamation point on this one. <laughs> and I think we all feel the same about it. You should not be going out with other men, dinner and dancing. And what Shannon said was right. Dinner and dancing is ga- their gateway activities. I agree. To um, intercourse. Sex. Sexual intercourse, yes. And then it's just, that's the final knot. And it's like, I'm just having sex with them and dinner and dancing. And what's the problem with that while I'm married? And then it just turns into, I'm just having sex with him. Yes. And then... I'm just getting an annulment. Yes. And then it just spirals. I'm just, and just keeping the baby. It just never ends. Just never ends. Just never ends. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I'm just. 
it's a snowball effect which goes yeah. into the kind of man you want, which is skiing. <laughs> and bring it back always to the beginning. Then it sounds like he'd have blue balls. Blue balls, because it's cold. <laughs> No, because, yes, yeah, snowball's a blue... It's snowball's a... Ball, a yes. Cold. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, I like the way that you make sure I got the joke. <laughs> you know, a lot of comics would have let that go. You follow up and go, got it? Good. That's like when you're doing stand-up and no one gets... It's, you say a joke and you're like, well, that's actually this because people are like, shut up. <laughs> They're like, I try to do that, try to explain the joke, and they go, yeah, we know. If you have to explain it, it's not a good right, joke. Right, I know. <laughs> it's a tough business. All Cut, right. It's cutthroat cutthroat it's also a lot of fun though yes yes um we all we like to end with a little bit of gratitude um guys that's our show chloe thank you for coming in thank you so much for having uh, me you nailed it a great birthday present it was a great happy birthday yeah see and, i had to bring uh, it up again yes no i almost <laughs> lost it because of my own narcissism <laughs> down yeah. which is a red flag yeah um thank you for joining us thank you for having um for shannon for chloe i'm mike vecchione special drops march 24th We'll see you guys next week.